The first limit that we want to look at is the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of our function. When we're looking for these limit values, we are looking for the y value. So the answer that we're getting here on the other side is going to be the y value that my graph is approaching. Now my x is approaching 3. This negative sign means from the left. So as I'm approaching 3 from the left, I am approaching the graph in this direction, and I end up on this open circle. I don't care what's happening at the value when I'm looking at limits, I'm just looking at the behavior of that value. And my value is coming down here, let this, let's see, this would be negative 1, negative 2. So it is approaching that y value of negative 2. So the y value that it's approaching is negative 2. Next, let's look at the limit from the right. So the limit as x approaches 3 from the right, I'm going to put a superscript plus sign, and this is of my function f of x. Now again, I am looking for the behavior of the y value, but this time I'm approaching 3 from the right hand side. So up here on my function, I'm coming down to this closed circle. Again, I don't care what's happening at 3, I just care about the y value that we're approaching. The y value that we're approaching is the y value of 1. So my answer, my y value here is 1. Continuing to analyze what's happening at 3, if I were to evaluate the function, this is a different question. I want to know what point exists when x equals 3, what's my y coordinate? So that answer is the number 1. Uh, we can also ask for the limit overall. So if I want the limit as x approaches 3, this implies that I'm approaching it from the left and from the right. Well, as I'm doing both of these things, approaching it from the right and from the left, I am not coming up to the same value. We call this a jump discontinuity. Again, I'm looking at behavior, not at the actual value. So my behavior from the left and the right don't match. So I say that this limit, as I'm approaching 3, which implies both from the left and from the right, does not exist. So if I finish up my statement here, f of x, this does not exist. So I can just write d, n, e. Let's take a look at another graph. This graph has an infinite discontinuity at 2, which is also known as a vertical asymptote. So I've got this vertical asymptote, which is going to give me some infinite behavior when I am evaluating some limits. Let's go ahead and first look at the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. So 2 from the left, that superscript minus, of f of x equals. Now, as I'm approaching this from the left of my asymptote, I'm going to pick up on this side of my graph and notice that this is heading towards infinity. So I would say that this limit is equal to infinity. Now, if that sounds a little bit contradictory, you are correct. Technically, this limit does not exist. There is no limit. It keeps on going infinitely up, but we can describe the behavior by saying it goes towards infinity. So we know that we've got that behavior. On the other side, on the other side, let's go ahead and take a look at the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x. Take a look at that. What is that one heading towards? I'm on the right hand side. I'm going to go ahead and follow that graph. This one's going down infinitely. So that y value that it's approaching actually doesn't exist, but I can describe the behavior by saying negative infinity. Now, if I were to follow this up and say, what's the limit overall? So the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, what would my answer be? My answer does not exist, right? I can't even describe behavior here. So this one, I would just simply say, does not exist. I want to look at another limit on this graph, and that's the limit as x approaches 0. We haven't yet looked at a limit where the graph is continuous like it is here at 0. So next I want to look at the limit as x approaches 0 
of f of x. I'm not going to worry about from the right or from the left because if I analyze it from both directions, I am landing at the same place. Let me label this axis so we can see that we are at the value of 1, 2, 3. So the y value that we're looking here is equal to 1. We have some really nice continuity here because I can also evaluate the function at 0. The function evaluated at zero is also equal to one. So we've got that nice definition, that nice example of how limits and continuity are related. In this example, we've got two horizontal asymptotes. The first one is at y equals two. That second one is at y equals negative three. Let's take a look at some limits as we're approaching infinity now. So let's do the limit as x approaches positive infinity of that function f of x. Well, if I'm approaching positive infinity, that means that I am on the right-hand side of the graph, and I am looking at the behavior here at this side. So if I'm looking at this end behavior, I can see that my graph is approaching a y value of two. It's approaching this asymptote. So I would say that my value here, remember those limits are y values, is equal to two. Let's do a second one and take a look at the limit as x is approaching negative infinity. So as we're approaching negative infinity of f of x, Negative infinity now is heading on the left-hand side, so we're looking at that left end behavior, and my y values are coming down to my horizontal asymptote at negative three. My limit here is equal to negative three. I've got a challenge for you. I've got this graph with several different discontinuities. I want you to pause the recording and answer each of these questions. Come back and we'll check your answers. I bet you're gonna do great. See you in a minute. Okay, let's see how you did. So for this first one, it's the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. That's what this plus sign is. So here's 2, and I'm going to jump on my graph here from the right, and I end up at that closed circle, which lines up with a y value of 1. How'd you do? So that first answer is 1. The second one, I'm approaching negative 2, so I'm at that vertical asymptote there at x equals negative 2, um, but I'm approaching it from the left-hand side of my function. So I'm in this part of the graph here. Approaching negative 2 from the left sends me up, up, up in the y direction to infinity. So you can actually answer this in two different ways. You could either say positive infinity to describe the behavior or you could say does not exist. Does not exist is correct, but I think infinity is a little better of an answer because we're really looking for behavior when we're evaluating limits. The next one, let me switch colors. For this next one, I am approaching three um, overall, no from the right or from the left. So I've gotta be approaching three from both directions and have them line up. So I'm approaching three, here's three. Um, if I'm approaching three from the left and from the right, can you see those two orange arrows? I am approaching this open circle here. Behavior is the same, whether I come from the left or from the right, I'm landing on that open circle that has a y value of two. How'd you do? So that answer is two. Number four, I'm evaluating the function. So I do now care about the value of the function at two. So at f of two, here's two, it's gonna be the closed circle and that lines up with one. So this is equal to one. Next question, number five, the limit as x approaches two from the left. So I'm approaching two, but from the left, so that's gonna put me on this piece of my graph. I'm approaching the open circle and the open circle lines up with, it's supposed to line up with negative one. If you said something like negative three quarters or negative 0.8, that's fine as well. Um, just somewhere in that realm is great. Last but not least, let's look for that function value at three. 
3, f of 3, that's going to be this closed circle right here whose value is 0. If this helped, please click that like button to help this spread to more people and stick around for my next video. We're going to evaluate limits using algebra. Um, we're going to multiply by conjugates. We're going to factor, which is probably the next section in your course. Thanks so much for watching.